What was to be a normal pre-holiday morning turned tragic to over 800 students at the Garissa University College. The early morning gunfire will turn to a more than 15 hours siege at their campus and result to the deaths of 142 students and five security officers. Kenya was thrown into mourning. I also take this opportunity to urge Kenyans to stay calm as we resolve this matter and to provide the authorities with any information they may have in connection with any threats to our security. This is a moment for everyone throughout the country to be vigilant as we confront and defeat our enemies. We killed all of them and it happened, what happened it can happen anywhere in the world. And I want to tell you, good citizens, good people, that your government has made sure that you are properly secured. The attack is so far the second deadliest in Kenya's soil after the 1998 U.S. embassy bombing that left over 200 people dead. While the country is still coming to terms with this heinous act, questions have also been asked on the government's response either to deter or respond to the attack. Okay, last week's actions were, uh, were carefully, was a carefully planned attack by al-Shabaab to get maximum media and global exposure just before the Easter weekend. It, was, it targeted a uh, university campus with 90% Christian, or more importantly, 90% down Kenya or not Northeast province people and students. Um, what was done at Mpeketoni in, in June of 2014, which is to start liberating zones and removing the central government's authority from these peripheral areas in the four frontline counties, that is in Mandara, Wajir, Garissa, and Lamu County. All week long, the mood at Chiromo Funeral Parlor, where relatives are gathered to identify their loved ones, has been somber, filled with grief and tears. I have lost my son Newton Karani, who was my firstborn. It's very bad because we are struggling financially, and I had invested in his education so that he can be able to help his siblings and I in future. He was studying business management. However, I thank Red Cross and the government for helping in the funeral plans. Yeah, I've uh, lost a niece of mine and we've been camping here since the first day. And um, as per the results, the way they are coming, we've not received any response, we've not received any report, we've not seen the name of our person, and we've been going through the bodies almost on a daily basis but we haven't found anything. Security experts have also pointed out that the attack at the University College mirror that of Westgate Mall in September of 2013. With this in mind, the president says that additional security officers should be enlisted. However, this decision goes against a court order that cancelled a similar process last year. I also further direct the Inspector General of Police to take urgent steps and ensure that the 10,000 recruits whose enrollment is pending promptly report for training at the Kenya Police College in Kiganjo. I take full responsibility for this directive. We as a country have suffered unnecessarily due to shortage of security personnel. Kenya badly needs additional officers and I will not keep the nation waiting. But as the government tries to find comfort in its actions during the attack, grieving families continue to pick bodies of their kin for burial. We had uh, conclusively identified 48 bodies. And as you are aware, we are calling the families to go to the next level to do post-mortem. We have ensured all families here that um, nobody is going to take the body from the mortuary until all identification has been done, just to ensure that things are done correctly and nobody takes a body which does not belong to them. The families have additionally been offered state financial support towards meeting the costs of burials as well as psychological support. 
All bills will be taken care of by the government. The government is going to foot all bills uh, that was what was announced. And we are waiting. Once all the um, uh, identification and post-mortem is done, then is, that's when the government will say when the relatives can take the bodies. But nobody is taking the body right now. We have been here for the families to actually give psychological debriefing. Psychological debriefing is where you start, therefore you start. Uh, here we are doing psychological first aid. What we are doing most is about observing. We are only here for the clients. We are offering them support. If they need material support, for example, they would need some water. They want to connect with their own. They don't know where to get the information. We are able to refer them to the relevant places and we literally support them, giving them a lot of warmth. That is why we are here for this period. Then after this, we are going to follow them through uh, to their families because we know their family members will still need our support. In the spirit of one Kenya, several people have also come out to donate blood towards the injured. We, we are very happy with the large numbers that have turned up to donate blood in support of the casualties of recent attacks in Garissa. And uh, so far uh, we have uh, raised more than 500 units. Our target is to raise at least 1,000 units of blood so that we can sustain the lives of uh, patients who are still in hospital. The blood that you're donating right now, you are not sure if it is going to to help the students or to help somebody who is sick. The only thing, the one who is needy, is going to help somebody who is needy. Uh, so I know it's a right cause. Uh, so if it was the student or if it wasn't the student, uh, I would still have helped. As a show of support, week-long night vigils have also been organized in the country, dubbed 147 is not just a number. It is very painful. We are like, security has not been given a priority. And I feel it's high time. We want to show uh, our fellow people who are watching us that we young people, we are very resourceful. And people, the people have been killed. The young people were killed in uh, Garissa. They like there's a big gap and there's no one going to fill it and they were one of the intellectuals in the country. We are determined we are going to come out uh, together as a country. Uh, the message today that we have for the country and for the world that is watching is that this is not the time to you know to lament. This is not the time to like, to blame each other. Uh, because that is uh, what uh, these terrorists want. Uh, this is a time for us uh, to come together uh, to show that we are united as one country. I think the security situation is one thing, honestly. Something is just not right somewhere. I don't know what that is. But something is just not right somewhere because uh, from, the, from, the, from what is being said, they had the intel. It could have been avoided. Also, the delay in getting there to do something about it, it just took too long. They could have saved many lives. Um, so a lot needs to be done. The whole uh, budget for security is a secret. Why? Where is that money going? Why aren't the police paid well? Why would you get ministers or cabinet secretaries to arrive there in a plane to see instead of send troops to do something about the situation? So it's very wanting and something needs to shift like yesterday. Across the globe, a number of countries as well as learning institutions have also held vigil and prayer ceremonies towards the attack. In support of their attacks, the Al-Shabaab militians have always called for the withdrawal of Kenyan troops in Somalia. This opinion though finds comfort in some quarters. It's an operation in that she has failed withdraw the Kenya Defense Forces into a new combat base in, Waj, in the vicinity of Wajir. We, the exit strategy of the Kenya Defense Forces who went into Somalia in October 2011, apparently the exit strategy was to join Amazon. It was not to go in, uh, exact revenge, rescue people who had been abducted, and then come back into our borders, which is our right. The right of hot pursuit is very well established in international law. No, the exit strategy was somehow based on joining Amazon for budget support. And so now we, so I'm in favor though, I've been in favor for over three years, three and a half years now, 
to withdraw the Kenya Defense Forces, not back to their barracks in Nairobi or elsewhere, but to, to a forward combat base, right. which would actually be under the command of the National Police Service. We would have NIS, National Intelligence Service, KRA, Immigration, would be at that base and also along four to six reception centers on our border. Right. Economically, the impact of this attack in Kenya cannot be gainsaid. Key planks of the Kenyan economy are already feeling the pinch with tourism on its knees. This year we had about slightly under 50,000 tourists who came in. Last year, same time, there was about 90,000. The decline is about 43% month on month, which is huge. Number of jobs lost is estimated at about 15,000 within the tourism sector, but then the knock-on effect is larger. However, having said that, we still have investments coming in. Um, in the last three years, we've had about, in the last three years, we've had five hotels open in Nairobi. And there's another three in the pipeline, at least four to five star hotels opening in Nairobi. So the leisure market has gone down in a big way. And this is why the coast is really suffering. However, the business market is growing.